are going to see the role of women in sericulture industry and the need to strengthen them and to lay emphasis in this particular area. Sericulture is one of the rural based agro industry with global reach while providing sustainable income and employment opportunities to the rural poor who are the main practitioners silk production activity fetches annual export earnings of more than 600 million US dollars. Some unique features of the silk sector are its rural nature, agro based ecologically and economically sustainable activity for the poor, small and marginal farmers, agriculture labor and women in particular. Many studies indicated that 60 percent of the activities in the pre-cocoon and post-cocoon sectors are and can be carried out by the women. Sericulture is a labor intensive industry in all its phases. It can generate employment up to 11 persons for every kg of raw silk produced out of which more than 6 persons are women. More than 60 lakh persons are employed as full-time workers in the production chain out of which 35 to 40 lakh persons are women. Ever increasing demand to meet the domestic handloom industry requirements and equally increasing potential for exports provide tremendous opportunities for the women to avail sustainable income generating activities. Though India produces all four varieties of silk, mulberry sericulture dominates with 89% in total production and 95% in exports. 98% of mulberry silk production takes place in the states of Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, West Bengal and Jammu Kashmir. This particular table indicates the various sectors involved in the production of silk. This table shows the silk production cycle. This cycle is broadly divided into mulberry production technology and cocoon production technology. Secondly, the post cocoon technology and thirdly, the silk technology. To begin with, it starts with the mulberry cutting which is made into a mulberry sampling and planted in the mulberry field. For field maintenance, cultivation practices, pruning, irrigation and fertilization schedules are followed for good field maintenance and the mulberry leaf is harvested. Coinciding with the leaf harvest, the egg incubation should be done. These eggs are brought from the granages which are further brought from the silkworm breeding and multiplication stages. And these are kept for brushing and taken up for silkworm rearing. Before one could start the silkworm rearing, a thorough disinfection should be done, rearing stands, rearing trays, mounting gates, rearing house and surroundings. By conducting silkworm rearings, after the completion of the life cycle, they spin a beautiful cocoon. These cocoons are taken up for transport and for marketing. After the cocoons are purchased, these cocoons are taken up for drying and storage or sorting and stifling from which sampling is made and then taken up for raw silk reeling. The cut cocoons and deformed cocoons and defective cocoons are taken up as raw material for spinning industry from where spun silk is taken up. Now the raw silk and spun silk are further taken up for marketing of this silk. 
this second phase is called as post cocoon technology. After the silk is purchased, it is further taken up for silk preparatory processes called throwing operations. In silk throwing, the yarn is further prepared into warp and weft making. And after the yarns are prepared, it is taken up for dyeing and then weaving or it is first woven and then taken up for printing. And finally, the finishing processes are made and the silk fabric is taken up for marketing. If you see this silk production cycle, there are certain indications made here. The starred ones are all the areas where women participatory areas. The double starred ones are the areas which demands skill of women and care by the women. The unstarred areas are the areas handled by men alone. This particular table clearly explains this, the importance of women's role in sericulture industry. Central Silk Board and State Departments had adequate experience of implementing the women oriented programs. The need for such a new approach for empowering the women through their active participation in various disciplines of industry is the need of the hour. In response to the external funding of the United Nations agencies, more and more departments attempt to focus the attention towards women and planning to place them in the center stage of the development. However, the gap between the planning, implementation and its impacts continue to exist. Sericulture is a labor extensive activity which involves intensive agriculture of mulberry and careful husbandry of silkworm rearing. Thus, it involves mostly a family endeavor. Despite increased technological sophisticated packages for the silkworm rearing, demands the discerning of human eye and a delicate human touch and thus the part played by the women in sericulture is substantial. Studies have indicated that involvement of female labor ratio in Karnataka sericulture ranges from 44% in rain fed mulberry region to 57% in irrigated mulberry region according to the author Sinha in 1990. Another study estimates that women labor employment in Karnataka sericulture is about 54 to 62% according to the authors Prabha Shekhar and Ravi Kumar in 1998. Even though local traditions inhibit women to perform certain specific operations related to the silkworm rearing, they still keep an eye on the whole enterprise as it begins in the field and progress at home until the product reaches the market for the sale. Even though farm women are aware of the mechanics of the sericulture, which they have derived essentially from observations, enterprise and hearsay, they are poorly informed about the rationality behind such mechanism. Hence, proper extension guidance is needed to these women entrepreneurs. Further, if women are not separately identified as beneficiaries in any project design, they are likely to remain as invisible in project planning. Implementation of the planners remain as gender blind. Therefore, gender analysis approach has been organized recognized as important in project planning. This depicts that in sericulture enterprise for successful development of sericulture, providing appropriate guidance to women in sericulture operations is much essential for its activities. Women's participation is taken as 
add on to existing programs, schemes and also little attempts was made to provide some more subsidies in favor of women under various schemes. Many studies reveal that though the schemes are sanctioned in favor of women, in actual practice men are in charge of assets created and benefits accrued. It is time that we have a focused approach for the participation of the women in sericulture industry. In the early 90s and in the new millennium, NGOs and government departments led various campaign on women's literacy, health and other social issues. Such campaigns have led to the formation of a large number of self-help groups, neighborhood groups, thrift and credit groups and these groups are available almost in all the rural villages. Recurring droughts, industrialization, globalization, liberalization and bountiful opportunities in the urban towns and cities perhaps attracting men to migrate to in search of better opportunities in the growing service sector. Women are compelled to stay back in villages to take care of elderly people and children. Work burden due to migration of husbands and male members of the families and increased drudgery due to the depletion of natural resources like groundwater and biomass have an adverse effect on women's health. Sericulture activities provide a perfect choice for the women because of very nature of activities that can take place close to the habitations. Reasons for low participation of women. However, the contribution of women in the sector is invisible due to various constraints and they can be summarized as follows. Lack of women oriented approaches in research, planning, implementation and evaluation of the schemes. Lack of congenial marketing services in the farm and non-farm sectors. Inadequacy of women extension workers. Methodologies, time duration, location of training programs put constraints on women's participation. Lack of consistency in the project's implementation. Lack of access to infrastructure like land, water, electricity, machinery, credit for working capital, attitude of people working in the financial institutions pose limitations. Strategy for improving the women's participation. In order to overcome the limitations for women's participation, the Central Silk Board has constituted a study to empower women in sericulture. Initially, an amount of 10 crores was set apart for exclusively for women's projects. A three-dimensional strategy for improving the situation has been brought forth and implemented. The general guidelines are as follows. Include creation of women development cells in central and state government offices, increase subsidies in the plan schemes, research focus on women friendly technologies, GIS and MIS formats to assess the impact and concurrently evaluate the schemes, convergence approach with forests, rural development, women and child welfare, industries, tribal welfare, marketing, finances, energy departments to bring in coordinated approach and action plans to maximize the benefits in favor of women. Secondly, exclusive women oriented programs and schemes. Establishment of Kisan nurseries in government assigned land by self help groups. Establish women sericulture technology parks and chalky rearing centers. Solar power supply to women managed reeling units. Health insurance to workers. 
promotion of biofertilizers and biopesticides and non-chlorine disinfectants. Training come study visits to women and facilities for husbands to participate. Design market infrastructure to favor women's participation. Create women development fund and provide interest subsidies on credit. Integrated approaches for taking up exclusive projects for women. Plan for long term projects that are consistent. Externally aided projects integrating watershed development, agriculture department, atma, joint forest management, wasteland development, tribal development, biotechnology, science and technology, one year silk projects, etc. Public private participation in the post cocoon sector and contract farming with NGOs and corporate participation. Promote direct linkages between rarer, reeler, twister, weaver by modifying the stringent regulations and liberalization of labor laws. Silk is considered as a luxury item along with gems and jewelry. It would therefore enjoy this support and patronage from the upper strata and growing middle class of the India society. Silk sari is an important bridal wear and hand woven silks are extremely popular in the west and there is no threat of quota like other fabrics. The lightweight silk is gaining popularity among the urban working women in India and in the fashion conscious western society. India holds monopoly in the production of yarn dyed silk fabrics. Campaign approach for promotion of Indian silk among us Indians and international communities with slogans that sericulture and silk for the women by the women is the need of the hour. Microcredit campaign for the women self groups is equally gaining popularity and India has an advantage of having a large platform of well organized women self help groups, networks, associations who are always ready to receive new ideas and concepts and commitment to help themselves and thereby helping the society for the larger development of the nation. The central and state government should utilize the women self help groups as a launch pad for promoting women's participation in the sericulture sector. <music> women form more than 60 percent of labor force in sericulture. Sericulture hold a good deal of employment opportunities for women and it provides the opportunity for women to improve their socio-economic status and decision making ability not only in production process but also in the household affairs. Very few studies have been conducted on the women who were mainly concerned with the sericulture industry. In sericulture women do all the laborious work right from the procurement of laying to the packing of cocoons. But it, when it comes to marketing, their participation is very minimal according to Acharya 1995. He observed that the existing social and cultural impediments coupled with the inconvenience of traveling long distances and hostile environment at the cocoon market reduce the access of market and income. Decision making is an index of women's status especially with regard to equality. Even when women involved on par with men in each and every task, their contribution in the decision making is meager. Hegarde stated that women had no independent source of income and individual status in our traditional society. This factor 
impinges the ability of a woman to take a decision independently or to participate in any kind of social and economic decision making process. Jaya Kotai Pillai in 1995 explained that empowerment is an active multidimensional process which enables women to realize their full identity and powers in all spheres of life. Power is not a commodity to be transacted nor can be given away as arms. The power of empowerment is a multidimensional social process that helps the women gain control over their lives. Mm -hmm.